Hello everyone, Chris Santiago from MMA On. Today we're here with professional basketball player, Cody, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We're here with professional announcer, Big Mo, Cody Mo Momarts. Cody, how's it going today? Doing well, doing well. Yeah, you and a lot of people have thought that I'm here in New Orleans for the Final Four, but no, I'm here for XMMA. Uh, how many times have you been approached about that? Uh, three in the airport before I even got out. <laughs> I'm multiple times in the hotel because I'm staying in the same hotel that the Tar Heels are in, so it's... But it's a reasonable question, and I understand why they asked it. So I'll probably start playing with it soon, start taking some photos with them and pretending that I'm like a forward or something for them. So. Cool. And this is your first time in New Orleans, I believe. How are you liking the city? I love it. You know, I was kind of surprised at how there's like a cool balance of like a lot of historical context, a lot of historical buildings, but also sections that have been modernized. And obviously it's a celebration here. They finished Mardi Gras recently. Right. Final Four is here. XMA is here. MMA Big Mo is here. Big Mo's here. Yeah, you're damn right I'm here. So it's, it's cool. And I, I got to explore a little bit today. Went down to the French Quarter. And this is, uh, this is a really cool city. I'm actually really enjoying it. It's cool that XMA came here. Which, you know, XMA 4 is stacked from top to bottom. Which fight is Big Mo looking forward to the most? Well, for me, you know, usually I look at matchups, but a big thing for me with this card is I like seeing a lot of the fighters that are on it specifically. I've gotten to announce John Sweeney before, Weston Wilson, Kyle Bokniak. It's good to see them back. John Dodson's back. I'm ex I mean, obviously I'm excited for the main event. Dodson versus Cisco is a really an interesting matchup for me kind of stylistically. Um, but really in terms of one favorite or another, I, I like them all. Like I, I get the best seat in the house regardless of the fight, so I don't really have favorites with it. I'm just excited for the show in general. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You're going to fill out the, the seats in the Fillmore. Yep. Uh, great crowd. Uh, you, how was the last experience out for XMMA 3? How did you like it in Miami? I loved it. You know, my first experience with XMMA, I, actually, I joined on to their second show. I didn't do their first show. So I was there for the South Carolina show. And then when Miami came back, what that kind of reaffirmed to me was the quality of matchmaking that they have. I knew that the production was yeah. going to be good, but I was curious if they could, you know, replicate the same great card that they had in South Carolina, and they did in spades. The Miami card was awesome, and they've done it again. You know, that I think is what's setting XMA apart. Is you know a lot of these up and coming brands they want to do many shows over and over and over again, as many shows as they can get out. XMA has taken the approach of kind of quality over quantity. And there have only done four shows, right? And so they space them out, get a totally stacked card, and make just overall, a, I think, a better experience for everyone that's watching it, both virtually and live. So, For sure, for sure. Then, you know, we just witnessed the heaviest boxing match in history with the tallest announcer in history. Yep. So how was that whole experience like over there in the sands of Dubai? That was awesome. I mean, I, I had connected with that promotion back right-ish when the fight was kind of announced. Um, but then the fight, then COVID spikes happened, and Eddie Torres bicep, but the fight ended up happening. And I am so thankful that it did. It was an awesome experience, not only for me, but really kind of the combat sports community in a whole. You know, something that I've really focused on with my career is trying to break, trying to bring combat sports to different industries, different avenues of people. And I was able to experience that firsthand. The strongman community was the primary community that was represented in following this fight. It wasn't the boxing community. So I got to see a different community of people that typically don't follow the sport of boxing now get really invested in it. And that was cool to me more than anything else. It was an awesome experience. Sounds like they may want to do a rematch. Sounds like Thor wants to keep boxing. So hopefully I can get back out there wherever they do the next fight. Because it was, it was a fantastic show, in my opinion, from start to finish, both in a quality of fight perspective, but also a quality of production perspective as well. What are some big dreams for Big Mo going into this later stages of 2022? Is UFC on your mind? Eagle FC maybe? Thoughts or uh, what's on your mind? I got a, a couple cool things in store that I can't share yet. I'm always, I'm always kind of making moves. I'm always working on things. So it's about developing my career. It's about taking the momentum that I had in 2021 when I really started working with a lot of new brands. It's about taking that momentum and just continuing it. Um, I don't think there's an announcer that can keep up with my pace in terms of the variety of the work that I do, the frequency of the work that I do. Um, so I just got to keep that going, got to keep finding more opportunities, finding more brands that are interested in working with me. And who knows where I'll end up. I mean, this whole thing's been a roller coaster already. So uh, I'm very thankful for my career so far. And uh, it all starts with the next show, which for me is XMA4 at the Fillmore tomorrow night, Saturday, um, and dominating that show. I know you're not going to fight on Saturday night, uh, but, you know, if you had to celebrate, you know, 
just coming back and announcing for XMA4, mm-hmm. like, how are you going to celebrate this such a fantastic job? Well, there's two ways that I can celebrate. I can either keep the energy going and go out and have a good time, or sometimes, depending if I'm really spent, come back to the hotel, kick it, relax, order some room service, maybe have a drink, stuff like that. So it depends. It depends how I'm feeling. More than likely, I'm going to want to keep the energy going. I'm a, it's, it's hard for me to wind down after these shows. So odds are I'm going to want to take that energy and kind of keep going with it. But we'll see. We'll see how I feel. And last question for you. Yes, Where sir. can the fans find Big Mo on social media? And what message do you have to say to the fans out there watching? So first to the fans, thank you so much for supporting me. Everything that I do is trying to improve the quality of the work that I do for you. I focus on entertaining the fans. A lot of announcers, they focus on different things. My thing is, what can I do the most that keeps you guys interested and intrigued to the work that I do? You guys have been very supportive for me. to me for that. I am forever appreciative. You can find me on social media. That's primarily where you can keep up to date with me. I'm on Instagram at official.bigmo. Same on TikTok, official.bigmo. And then on Twitter, I'm actually bigmo underscore official. I wish I had continuity in the usernames, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. So follow me on social media. That's where you can keep up with all the content that I put out. And uh, as always, and now from New Orleans, Louisiana, let's get wild, ladies and gentlemen. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Mel. Of course. Thank you, guys. Take it easy.